it's me, Kevy. So recently I read The Clocks by Agatha Christie. And oh boy, did I hate this book. This book is such garbage. It's only good for kindling or wiping your ass. But that's not why I'm making this video today. I'll talk about that in my next Agatha Christie video. One thing I did take away from this book was Christie's assertion through her character Poirot that The Mystery of the Yellow Room by Gaston LaRue is the perfect murder mystery. That is really a classic. I approve of it from start to finish. Such a logical approach. There were criticisms of it, I remember, which said that it was unfair, but it is not unfair. Oh no. Very nearly so, perhaps, but not quite. No, all through there is truth, concealed with a careful and cunning use of words. Everything should be clear at that supreme moment when the men meet at the angle of three corridors. Definitely a masterpiece, and, I gather, almost forgotten nowadays. Obviously, I was intrigued by this assertion, and I wanted to see for myself if it was as good as she claimed. Mystery of the Yellow Room is the original locked door mystery. Monsieur and Mademoiselle Stangerson are working on a major scientific breakthrough at their home, the Glandier, deep in the French woods. When the Mademoiselle goes to bed, her father continues to work until he hears her screaming from her room Murder! Murder! When he goes to the door, he finds it locked. By the time they get the door open, she is on the floor, strangled and bludgeoned and barely alive. Despite the door being locked and the windows closed, the attacker is somehow not anywhere in the room. A famous French detective thinks he knows what happened, but a young journalist named Roulette B doesn't agree and does his own investigation. None of this is really a spoiler because it's part of the first chapter, but once I do get into spoiler territory, I will let you know and provide a timestamp for you to jump to. This is a fairly short book, under 200 pages, but it feels terribly long. I don't know if this is an error that came out of the translation or if it always had this issue, but there were certainly parts where I just wanted it to hurry up and be over so I could just find out who did it and move on to my next book. Another quick point, even though I'm pretty good with the French language, I just had a block against the protagonist's name. So most of the time as I was reading, I would either call him Roulette Table or Ratatouille. During my review, expect me to be calling him those as well. Spoilers in five, four, three, two, one. As soon as they said Mademoiselle Stangerson had some dark, terrible secret, I knew it must be that she had been previously married, and now whoever her first husband was is the person attacking her. Later on, they said, the Stangersons had been robbed once before when they lived in America, so I knew the robberies had to be connected, so the only person who could have committed this crime was someone who was present in both places. And while I had the right idea, it wound up sending me down the wrong path. I suspected Larson pretty early on, particularly when they started focusing on his cane. I knew there was something fishy there. But then, about halfway through the book, they introduced Rancer. And the first thing we learn about him is that he knew the Sangersons from America. So then, since we had this clue that the murderer must have been from both places, he immediately seemed to be the most likely. When Ratatouille finally revealed who'd done it at the end, I was briefly disappointed that it wasn't Rancer, because that's what it seemed to be setting up with that whole clue about America. But I was quite satisfied with how it all wound up coming together. The one cinching piece of information that we weren't given, though, as far as I remember, is that Larson was in America back when the Stangersons were there. And I feel like if we'd known that before, it would have been more... Fair. I don't think it was really unfair, though. For the most part, all of the details were there, hidden in plain sight, just being looked at in the wrong way. In the end, we find out the attack in the Yellow Room happened much earlier. All the witnesses who thought they were witnessing a murder only witnessed her nightmare. And this makes the whole solution so much simpler. The whole time it's been, how did this man 
escape the locked room when attacking her when the door was locked and the windows were shut. But several hours ago, when the crime actually took place, the door wasn't locked and he could easily walk out. Another thing I'd like to point out is the Stangerson's scientific research they're working on is about disappearing matter, which to me seemed very cheeky because of course that's what appeared to have happened with the attacker. He just vanished into thin air. He disappeared. And I thought it was really amusing when they brought up these parallels between the science they were doing and the crime committed against them. The narrator of the novel is very much a Watson slash Hastings type constantly gassing up his companion. He's the most genius man to have ever lived. Meanwhile, asking the stupidest, most obvious questions. I was really not a fan of this narrator. I did like when the narration was switched up a bit and a few chapters were written from the perspective of Roulette Table. I thought those were more interesting to read. Those chapters are, of course, what Poirot says is where the definitive clue is hidden, but while I was reading, I totally missed it. This novel heavily sets up a sequel. Throughout the story, Roulette Table makes allusions to the perfume of the Lady in Black. This winds up being the title of Gaston LaRue's next book. It was irritating while I was reading that so much of Ratatouille's backstory was built around this perfume of the lady in black, but they never explained it during this one. Frankly, I didn't enjoy this book enough to want to read the sequel. Leaving those questions unanswered to me doesn't justify or make me want to pick up that sequel anymore. So overall, I felt that this story was adequate. It was not very fun to read, but the final solution was enjoyable. So those are my thoughts on Gaston LaRue's The Mystery of the Yellow Room. Let me know if you've read this one and what you thought of it, or if you have other classic mystery recommendations for me, let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and if it pleases and sparkles, I'll see you in the next video. Mwah! <laughs>